Hi there and welcome back to the M5 Stack official channel. I'm Luke and we're back once again with a product introduction video. Here are a whole bunch of goodies we have for you that have come out around the month of August. And we're going to be taking a look at these one by one. Let's have a look first at the long-awaited Stick-C Plus. The Stick-C Plus is an upgrade to the regular Stick-C. What changes have been made? So inside there is a bigger battery. Previous Stick had 95 milliamp hour battery, but now that's been upgraded to 120. The most notable difference is the screen size. So previously the Stick C had a 0.96 inch screen size, but now the Stick C Plus has a 1.14 inch. So we're also then increasing the resolution from 80 by 160 pixels to 135 by 240. There's also an inbuilt buzzer. So now you can use this for adding notifications in a tactile way. And a few of the issues with the Stixie hardware have been improved in this version. But it's also compatible with all of the previous Stixie's hats and units and so on. Let's have a look at some of the other specs of this device. Okay, and on to the next part. So now we also have some new accessories for your Atom. So the M5 Atom has been out for a while now, and now we're adding some more prototyping modules. In the last month's episode, I showed you some of the prototyping modules that are available. A new prototyping kit that we have from the Atom is the Atom Mate. It has a small footprint compared to the other Atom prototyping kits and features two different designs. You have an internal design which breaks out the pins in a similar format to the Stick C. And also there is a breakout which is a little easier to solder on the outsides in this X sort of shape. You can solder that one in. And it also comes along with your usual pin headers and also some extra plastic components. These plastic extras can help you to connect to uh, Lego pieces or screw it into various devices. And there we have it, the M5 Atom Mate. Here's a few of the extra specifications of this device. Okay, and the other M5 Atom device that I mentioned is the Atom Switch. So this looks very similar, especially the packaging also to the M5 Atom Proto Kit that I showed you in the last video. The big difference with this is that it's been designed to accept 220 volts AC input and convert that down. And it has two inbuilt relays for switching on and off devices. As usual, it comes with the Atom light included and it has an RS485 converter inside and a whole host of different accessories including your usual DIN rail that's in also in the Atom Proto Kit, various screw terminals, magnets, and so on. So for your prototyping needs, this could very well be the M5 Atom prototyping kit that you need. Here we can see the Atom Fly. And you're right, it's a quadcopter. This is kind of a test kit in a way because there's no included code to make it fly. It's something designed for DIY drone enthusiasts to be able to design their own code and flight programs. It comes with what you would expect for a drone kit. It has four cordless motors, 
four PWM channels for controlling the motors. It has a lithium battery which you can charge externally, uh, a 200 milliamp hour battery. Uh, it has inbuilt LEDs and also three different sensors. It has the BMP280 for barometric pressure, so you can check the altitude of the drone. It has the MPU6886, which is a, an accelerometer, so then we can use that to help out with the pitch and roll yaw of the drone. And also it has the TOF time of flight sensor built in. You could essentially use this for collision detection. And uh, that's about it. You get also get a USB uh, charging cable for the battery. The, you, the battery has to be charged externally. And here are a few of the other specifications of the Atomfly kit. And carrying on now from the M5 Atom Proto Kits, we have a brand new Proto Kit for the regular core, fire and go M5 stack kits. So what's different in this new Proto Kit to the old Proto module? Well, the main difference is the height. So the old Proto module uh, was 2.5 that was the name, Proto Module 2.5, 2 millimeters being the wall thickness and 5 millimeters being the height of the module. This new one is Proto 13.2. So again, the wall thickness is 2 millimeters, but the height is much thicker, 13 uh, millimeters there so you can fit a lot more components in that you may not have been able to cram into the previous proto module. It also comes with a whole host of different accessories. This nice clear plastic case which has included vents and various pop-out sections for if you wanted to add in extra plugs externally. The layout of the board is slightly different from the older one. So you have some bigger holes there in case you have some larger through hole components you want to solder in there. The kit also comes included with a taller bus header than the previous one had. You'll have to solder that in yourself. And it also has various screw terminals, a barrel jack connector and a grove connector. So be excited to see what you come up with, what new inventions you may make with that. Okay, moving on now. We have the PoE base. So what does PoE stand for? Power over Ethernet. So this is a kit that's been designed for adding Ethernet functionality to your embedded projects. It uses the W5500 chip for Ethernet control and it has a few extra pieces in the kit. These two small chips which come in the kit uh, can be soldered onto the board for controlling your RS232 devices and RS485 devices. So you have a choice of these two here. We also have the usual screw terminal connectors, uh, DIN rail, and clips for attaching to the DIN rail, and little magnets in there too. So if you're hoping to add uh, Ethernet control to your RS-485 or RS-232 projects, there will be this could very well be the kit that you need. Here are a few extra specifications of the PoE base kit. Okay, next up, we have something that we've not seen a new one of in a while. We have a new unit. This is the whole unit. 
So as the name suggests, that is, this is a Hall effect sensor. What is a Hall effect sensor? Basically, a Hall effect sensor can sense the proximity of magnets. Inbuilt into the Hall effect sensor, there are three integrated A3144E Hall effect switches or sensors. And it's using a 74HC08DIC to process that. So what can we use this for? Often Hall effect sensors are used in uh, burglar alarms in windows. So when the magnetic connection is broken on the window, you could send out a alarm signal from any of the M5 devices. Or you could use it also uh, for checking speed. Say for instance, you could attach it to your bicycle wheel and then attach a magnet to the wheel to check how many revolutions the wheel has passed and other such projects like that. So uh, here are a few of the other specifications of the whole unit sensor. And I look forward to see what kind of projects you will come up with with the whole effect sensor. Last but not least, we have a brand new series of modules called the COMX series. So COM standing for communications. You may have seen in the past we had SIM 800, uh, LTE modules and so on. This COMX series is intended to uh, update that series to mo more modern standards. So uh, there's currently three modules out at the moment. This is the COM GSM. So it's using the SIM 800C chip inside. There's also a uh, LoRaWAN uh, version. There is an LTE version also. And there are three more on the way out. There is, there is a Sigfox module, a NBIOT, and also an LTE 4G module. As with any of these communication modules, do make sure to check the documentation pages, which I'll leave down in the description, to make sure the operating bands of this device are available in your country. You can have a look at the data sheets of the chips in each device. This particular device, as I mentioned, is using the SIM 800C. Uh, the other module is using the SIM 7600CE. And the LoRaWAN module is using the CubeCell branded LoRaWAN module which operates in the 868 MHz band. All of these kits include uh, aerials inside. There's also on the, on the board there is a dip switch, so you can set the pins that you're going to use for communicating with this device so that no conflicts may occur with any of the other modules that you might be using in unison with this COMEX module. That's it for all of the new products that I'm introducing this week. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comment section. Also check the description for all the links to the documentation of these products. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.